Welcome to this video for N1 Engineering Science, and we'll be looking at the questions and answers for a previous national exam paper. If you haven't done so already, please remember to hit that subscribe button to support this YouTube channel, to hit that like button and to share these videos. Now, the first question we'll be looking at, we need to match column A with column B. There are certain terms and there are definitions that we need to match to the term. The first term in 1.1.1, what is a moment of a force? It is the turning effect of a force about a point. To define the term energy, it is the capacity to do work. To define the term work, it is the force moving through a distance. To define the term heat, it is any form of energy which produces heat. To define heat capacity, it is the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of a substance with one degree Celsius. Now in question 1.2, we are given a statement and we need to match the sentence to the statement. The resistivity of a conductor can be defined as the resistance offered by a specific type of material. In the following statement, the definition of Joule's law states that the heat developed in a circuit is directly proportional to the square of the current, the resistance, and the time that current flows. In the following statement, the definition of Fleming's right-hand coil rule states that taking the coil in the right hand with the fingers around the coil in the direction of conventional current flow, the extended thumb will point to the North Pole. Electrical currents can be described as the movement of free electrons in a closed circuit. So in this illustration, we have electron flow from the negative terminal through to the positive terminal. In question 1.6, we need to indicate which of the following statements are true or false. In part A, a bar metal strip is an example of the linear expansion of materials. And the answer is true. In part B, the law of moments state that a system of forces is in equilibrium when the sum of the clockwise moments is equal to the sum of the anti-clockwise moments about the same point? And the answer is true. In part C, velocity ratio is the ratio of the distance moved by the effort as opposed to the distance moved by the same load. And that is true. In part D, the resultant is the single force that can balance two or more forces. So yeah, we have a five Newton force representing the three newtons and the two newtons. So in this case, five newtons minus three newtons would give us a balance or a total of two newtons moving in a easterly direction. Therefore, this statement is true. In part E, when three forces acting on a point is in equilibrium, they can be represented in magnitude and direction by the sides of a triangle taken in sequence. So if we have a look at this triangle, you'll notice that the arrows are pointing in the same sequence. So therefore the answer would be true. Now for question 1.7, we need to choose a word inside of the yellow blocks, which matches this description. And the different words are torque, mass, moment of a force, scalar, velocity, weight, vector, mechanical advantage, speed and displacement ratio. So for our first description, the force of attraction between the earth and a body is known as weight. So for example, for every one kilogram, it could be equivalent to 9,8 newtons. In part B, the speed in a certain direction is known as velocity. So here we see there is a motor vehicle and it's traveling a certain speed in a specific direction. So therefore it's known as velocity. In part C, the ratio between the load lifted 
and the effort applied is known as mechanical advantage. In part D, a physical quantity which only has magnitude, in other words, no direction, is referred to as a scalar. So yeah, I've got two examples. We have a cube weighing 9,8 kilograms. We have a motor vehicle traveling at 60 kilometers per hour. And in both cases, we have mass or speed, but no direction. So this is a scalar. In question 2.1, a school bus is traveling at a velocity of 45 meters per second in a northwestern direction. A learner is walking from the back of the bus to the front at a velocity of three meters per second, also in a northwestern direction. So to answer this question, first of all, we need our compass headings of north, east, south, and west. The bus and the learner are both traveling in a northwesterly direction. The learner is walking from the back of the bus towards the front of the bus, also in a northwesterly direction. The bus is traveling at 45 meters per second, and the learner is traveling at three meters per second. Because they're in the same direction, we can add them together. Therefore, we have a total of 48 meters per second. In question 2.2, .2, we need to determine the displacement of the diagram below. So looking at our compass headings of north, east, south, and west, you'll notice that one vector is traveling in a easterly direction, and the length of the vector is 123 meters. The second vector traveling in a southeasterly direction, and that is measured at 72 meters. Now, if I use a scale of 10 meters for every one centimeter, I will be able to plot the distance between the two vectors, and that will give us our displacement. Um, just remember that your scale of 10 meters is equal to one centimeter. Now, if I take my protractor, and I place it on the original vector. In other words, east is my reference point. We will notice that this displacement vector is sitting around about 21 degrees. So therefore the total displacement is 171 meters, 21 degrees south of east. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe and to hit that like button. Thank you.